I'm Ryan Carlson, I'm with Health Jump, and today we're talking to Dan Guidebeck, the Strategic Partnership Manager from Dr. Chrono. What is it that Dr. Chrono does for those that aren't initiated into the world of electronic health record management systems? Yeah, so Dr. Chrono is a uh, full-scale EHR that does both practice management and clinical management and we serve mostly the outpatient provider population. So any specialty, we like to consider ourselves specialty agnostic. We support a lot of different practices and a yeah. lot of different medical specialties and have a lot of opportunity there to be able to support that. Who is it that you typically have the conversation with that they lean in and they're like, oh, I'm picking up what you're throwing down? Who, who is that? I would say if you're trying to figure out who's the, the the likely person to have the light bulb moment. Yes. Uh, it's the provider at the practice. Yeah. Typically, our software better aligned for those providers who are looking for deeper levels of interoperability or partnerships with our open API and things like that. Yeah. Um, so people who are on the cutting edge of, of technology and healthcare okay. and where the two kind of meet in that Venn diagram, uh, that's where we find our sweet spot of users. But at the same time, right, Anybody from a provider to a staff member can find value in, in software that increases your efficiency as a clinician or a staff member. Since there are hundreds of these systems to put in electronic medical records and practice management softwares, what are the pain points that Dr. Chrono exists for? What gap did you yeah. leap into? Yeah, I would say for providers who have a less than unique setup in regards to seeing patients, whether that's in their office pre-2020 or looking more towards a telehealth type of practice uh, in the future, we facilitate the use of a web application with an iOS application, both on the iPad and iPhone. So if you're looking to leverage multiple technologies in your practice, that's our where our providers are wanting to be able to have the freedom and the opportunity to see the patients in the environment, in the uh, situation to which they're, you know, kind of whatever the best for the patient. Uh, so at this point, right, like you can take the iPad and you can see somebody at home or you could use your iPhone Dr. Chrono and use the iPad for your telehealth appointment. And so like you can, okay. and all of this works in real time, all the data kind of syncs across. So it really gives everybody the opportunity to work in the way they want to work yeah. rather than trying to pigeonhole them into a software that we think is appropriate for them as a provider. So I'm hearing really it's around both the patient and provider experience, the flexibility. You're talking about your open API. Mm -hmm. What is it specifically it, that you're doing that you feel is unique about that? Does, does Dr. Chrono like have a magic niche in the market that, that revolves around that or what's that central theme? I think at the core of it, right, as a company, our desire is to let clinicians be clinicians. Okay. Right at the end of the day, yeah. that's what you went to school for way too many years to do yeah. and where we're best suited for the technology piece and we'll figure that out for you. So the API okay. for us is, is the opportunity where if Dr. Chrono, let's just say, gets you nine tenths of the way there, gets you almost to the finish line, a yeah. partner like a health jump can get you that last tenth of a mile just to get you to where okay. you need to be connected to a state registry or something like that. If, for example, you wanted to connect to a state registry. C correct. Oh, okay. Or wanted to be able to search your data in a certain database format that makes it easier for data interpretation, right? That's where our API comes and really shines. Uh, we're, for we're, we're talking about an in-joke here uh, yeah. in that Health Jump and Dr. Chrono had customers in common mm -hmm. and they wanted to submit their uh, results for a COVID-19 state registry. And yeah. So we facilitated that, we're able to extract the data out and then send it in the appropriate format to the state registry system. Correct, which according to the customer would have taken a human being to do quite a long period of time to yeah. manually upload all of these files. Like they get to then be part of the patient care situation yeah. as opposed to the administration side. What I find helpful is I'm, the more I've learned about Dr. Chrono, I keep having these flashbacks to things like salesforce.com where it's, here's a vanilla experience. It, you can do the, 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 all the basic motions, right? But not everyone wants to work or build themselves into a, a pre-existing, highly opinionated software. Whereas I'm, I'm hearing that Dr. Chrono is where if I have unique workflows, needs, I've got like specific things, this is where you can actually flesh out yeah. The, the various aspects that you might need. Yeah, yeah, so the way we think of our product is, right, similar to when the iPhone launched. The iPhone <laughs> can do 
a certain set of tasks that are basic for a phone. Make a phone call, send a text message. I mean, Dr. Corona can do some basic functionalities. Yeah. That's what's needed of an EHR. Our partners, along with our increased ability to add new features, yeah. is where you download the apps. You download, you make the software meet your needs. And yes, that does take someone who's a little bit more uh, willing to customize, yep. but at the same time, right, you're not you're given the freedom to walk the path you want and, and allows you to make it meet your needs as opposed to you fit into our boxes, what we think you should do as a clinician in an EHR. Do you have any unique use cases where someone was only able to do what they wanted to do because they're using Dr. Chrono? Was there like a specific use case or workflow or specialty that any other way they would have been forced into a framework versus getting to build their own sandbox out? Yeah, so there, there's definitely a lot of specialty softwares out there in the EHR space sure. that are very niche and yep. work very well for those specialties. Where Dr. Chrono, some of those specialties that are having to branch out into other areas, it's really giving them the opportunity to make a custom experience for the type of provider they have at their practice. I, one use case I can think of is we had a practice who was on Dr. Chrono, loved Dr. Chrono, got purchased by a hospital okay, and needed to be able to share their data with the hospital as part of their contract. Okay. So we worked with the partner, potentially with Health Jump, to be able to facilitate basically a crosswalk between the Dr. Chrono EHR platform and the hospital's EHR platform yep. to allow for clinical data sharing as well as billing data sharing as well. Oh, so, so it was both the clinical and the practice data so they could, without making the clinic switch over to be in a uniform EHR. So the providers didn't have to learn a new system. The staff didn't have to learn a new system, the outpatient. Awesome. But the hospital and their billing staff and their uh, compliance staff were able to all get all this normalized data mm -hmm. from the Dr. Chrono system via the API and a partner to then feed into their hospital system, which allows them to build in their hospital system. Cool. I didn't intend that to be a commercial, but no. also thank you no, very much. No, no, no. It just uh, it made sense. Yeah. So what is it that, Dr. Chrono, what makes you uniquely qualified to be addressing or tackling, not qualified, but what is it that makes Dr. Chrono special in this regard? Yeah, I would say we're in the forefront of our brains is always how can we like how can we find ways to use technology to do the technology pieces, right? Like how can we minimize the amount of auxiliary work that yeah. a practice would do? For example, you are going and creating a spreadsheet in Excel, for example, yeah. like you do. And, and for us, like Dr. Chrono is the spreadsheet, and we just happen to also know some of the formulas uh, in how to Okay. in regards to the templates like of how clinical documentation works and so for us we're always trying to give you the opportunity to build what fits you but at the same time we also understand that not everybody has the time the resources or, or the desire to do that so there's definitely this community mm -hmm. involvement when it comes to sharing ideas across users whether it's our clinical template library or we have a blog or the api like developer forum so like we have created this social connection yeah. across our user base. Yeah. So I now, I mean, you, you actually said something. You, you said you've got a community template base. Is this mm -hmm. where people can say, I found this helpful for this yeah. type of application? Yeah. For example, OBGYN, I have to leverage ACOG specific templates that yep. are very specific to pregnant patients. And so one of our OBGYN providers has uh, created a template that hits all of the appropriate awesome. items and they share it via the uh, library. And we have a voting system as well as our different teams are able to leverage best in class as it comes yeah. to specialties uh, very easily on the back end. So it's very easy for us to share that uh, across different practice groups. That's really cool. So if I were someone that was looking, looking to Dr. Chrono to help me, you know, tailor the electronic health record experience to align with what I need. What would my first steps be? Like, how would I learn whether it's going to be the right fit or whether I had the right skills to build it out? How, how would you help someone yeah. navigate that? Yeah, I would say if a practice is looking towards being an adaptable yeah. to healthcare and healthcare compliance, Dr. Chrono is a good solution in the sense that we can. You can mold the clay to fit your needs. In regards to the, the type of user coming in the door, uh, I would definitely say our team is very willing and um, more than happy to speak to just what's the best solution for you, whether that's yeah. Dr. Corona Vanilla, right? Or I need 
X amount of partners in order to make this fit my specific needs, yeah. or if you're that good, you could build an API. You, you can build an, a free application to our API as a Dr. Chrono user yeah. and have it meet your specific needs. So if you can't find a partner that fits, you can build it yourself. I and mean, if you can't build it yourself, we have partners that can build it for you. That's pretty cool. So, so yeah, we really give you the, it's a blank piece of paper. Is it like a customer success model where, yeah, I want to do this, is it like someone's like your safari guide that helps you navigate yeah. that? Yeah, yeah, we typically have an implementation process that with any software, especially that's highly customizable like Dr. Yeah. Chrono, there, there is a, a fair amount of time that goes into implementation. But at the same time, the whole idea is you set it up for success at the beginning so that you can run your practice as if you see fit and they're on. At the end of the day, everybody's there for solutions rather right. than just trying to find the next feature that fits. So whenever I think configurable, customizable, adaptable, you know, all these great words, they also sound like they could take a lot of time. So larger or smaller than a bread box, where do you see these implementation cycles go? If I knew I wanted to do this and either make a switch or start mm -hmm. right from the get-go, how long am I thinking that this might take? I know that's a loaded question, yeah. it's custom. Are we talking like quarters, weeks, months? What does that typically? If you had the light bulb moment that I think I want to switch EHRs, give yourself six months to not only determine what's the best EHR for me. If you're a certain specialty and a niche specialty EHR fits all of your check boxes, take that and run with that, right? If it fits you, you're gonna be a better clinician because you know the system, because yeah. it fits your needs. But beyond determining the best EHR and then the implementation, which varies depending on specialty, varies depending on complexity. But at the end of the day, we have a both automated and human yeah. process to allow you to self-learn but also have a guide. Like you said, that yeah. safari leader. Uh, there is that person to help you through that process, um, which can take anywhere between six to nine weeks. Sure. Uh, from an implementation yeah. perspective. The more you do the more you do your homework early, the easier it is on the back end. So you're saying once the best fit for Dr. Chrono is once you've exhausted the the easy turnkey, like you've realized at this point no one's going to give you exactly what you want, and there is value in having exactly what you want, Dr. Chrono is going to be like a great fit because you don't have strong opinions about how a practice needs to run. You just have the, the template, like well, every EHR needs to do these following things. Exactly. So we ensure that you can do the basic functions yeah. as a healthcare provider. And we ensure all of that. But if you're, say, a podiatrist, yeah. for example, and you have specific templates and your business model is based off a of volume of patients because the okay. reimbursement is low, we're here to help ensure that you have templates that meet your efficiency needs as opposed to potentially maybe oh. a more flowery language template. Right. So like you have the ability to either create the most efficient possible a solution yeah. or work towards something that's more in line with creating a beautiful template that your patients can look at. And so it really gives you the freedom to do both because we've seen surgical mm -hmm. centers come through and they leverage the API for specific tools that they build, yeah. uh, whereas primary care providers love all the templates, love, love the solutions that we have within the software itself and don't need to build anything. So it's not everybody has to build to the API, uh, but it's nice to have as a backup, for sure. example. Yeah. So what is the, if people take away one thing, what is it you wish more people just want, what do you associate to Dr. Chrono? What do you want people to walk away with that they normally maybe wouldn't stumble across? Yeah, I would say we're best suited if you like a mobile EHR. So something yep. that you're on the move and, and you're in a hybrid environment of healthcare, which to be fair, I think pretty much everybody is at this point. Hmm. So it gives us the opportunity to like, we'll work with you, right? We'll adapt to your needs. Whether that's in office and you have a computer in front of you, you can use our web. If you're in some patient's home, you can use the iPad or even the iPhone if you're on a telehealth visit. Whereas our other, I would say, pillar, so to speak, of what you want to take away from Dr. Perona is the API. We strive ourselves on being tech forward. We strive ourselves on honestly creating an API that really supports the provider as well as the patient as well. And so whether that's access to your data with the Cures Act coming out and all yep. the requirements coming like that, that's what we're here for. We're here to make sure you have access to the data you need, whether that's through 
the EHR as a provider or through our patient portal as a patient, mm -hmm. or if ultimately at the end of the day you happen to be an Apple user and you have the Apple health record, you can share that data with your provider through oh, Dr. Chrono. Cool. Yeah, we're one of the six EHRs that can do that. So that's kind of nice. I would say doesn't that's more hurt, than a yeah. lot. That, that, that's actually really I kind of buried the lead that's fair, but yeah, yeah it doesn't hurt. So I'm hearing a lot of things you say, telehealth, remote, mobile, high pace environments, the pandemic, healthcare, what's changed? What growing pains in the midst of it, which ones became like so terrible they couldn't, like they just like, surfaced to the top. So as a company, like we shifted to remote first kind of workforce. Yep. So getting used to everybody working from home, it was something we worked with and got through in 2020. And all of our teams now are pretty much remote. Some people do go to the office, but they're by themselves typically and more than six feet away. But from a user standpoint, most of our practices are those, let's just say under three provider practices. And so you're a business owner, you're a clinician, and now a global pandemic just hit. And now you have to figure out a way to maintain your business also see your patients, which are your revenue stream. Yep. So with that comes, you know, a little bit of desire and need to see patients in different settings. And so for us during the pandemic, we saw, we've always had partners that provide telehealth, mm -hmm. but we really saw that to at moving forward in how healthcare is gonna be distributed yeah. to patients, uh, that a telehealth in-house solution was really our best step forward to not only help our users, but also really to democratize healthcare, regardless of where you are, if you're in the middle of Iowa yeah. or if you're in downtown New York City. And that's really where we saw telehealth become our paramount concern in need of our user base. Yeah. As a company, we're on Zoom constantly all the time, so might as well offer that to the patients and have it be you know, pretty easy for providers to do. I love the idea that you take the empathy of being a company that has gone totally remote and applying that same empathy to the providers that are also doing things remote. Like I'd imagine that really does, in, from a design paradigm, have some little play into what you're doing. It also makes it easy to test out features oh, in, in, in the software itself, because yeah. we are a mobile platform that can be used anywhere as long as you have an internet connection. Having to do that remotely, not in the office, not Dan, with a high- Dan, go over to the other conference room and pretend you're in another state. Exactly, <laughs> now we're having to use different browsers, different tool sets, different internet speeds. And wireless networks exactly. and like all of those things. So I'm hearing that this was like a lot of my friends that are in education where it was the wake up call like, we weren't ready for this, we talked about integrating more mobile, remote, you know, video, accessibility. It was just this compressed timeline. Like we had time. And so yeah. I'm hearing Dr. Crona had immediate relevance then. Yeah, the joys of urgency is that it is an immediate accelerant to growth and innovation. I wish Dr. <laughs> Crono and yourself a lot of success. So thank you for sharing some of these unique aspects of Dr. Crono. We'll be here as long as you need us. Thank you.